Welcome to Lesson 9a, Diffusers, the Free Lunch. In this lesson, we discuss diffusers and how they can increase volume flow rate for free. We'll do an example problem. What is a diffuser? It's simply a gradual expansion in a pipe or duct, as sketched here. If we go from 1 to 2, we have these average speeds, V1 and V2, but the diameter has increased with some angle theta. The pressures are P1 and P2, and since the pipe is expanding, speed goes down, but pressure actually goes up. A diffuser is a minor loss, so it has a minor loss coefficient. We can look up KL in tables such as this one in our textbook or other books or online. Remember that by convention we use the larger speed, which is the one at the smaller pipe section, or V1, when we calculate minor loss. Here's an example for if theta equal 20 degrees, as D over capital D increases, or capital D over D decreases, KL also decreases. But even after taking into account the minor loss and its associated irreversible loss of pressure, it turns out that the pressure still rises through the diffuser. What's the optimum diffuser? If the angle's too sharp, you'll get flow separation and lots of irreversibilities, and KL will be high. On the other hand, if you have a very shallow angle and a long diffuser, friction at the wall will start to affect the KL, so KL will again be high. Somewhere in between these two extremes will be the optimum diffuser. It turns out that the best conical diffuser, in other words the highest pressure rise with the minimal loss, has capital D over D of about square root of 8, or an area ratio of 8, angle theta pretty small, only 4 degrees, and L over D of about 25. I drew it to scale here. This is the optimum diffuser if you have the room for it. In other words, if you have this much length available to you. And creating a diffuser like this would be costly. So typical realistic diffusers have theta of about 10 degrees, rather than 4 degrees, and also a shorter length. What are some applications of diffusers? Well, there's a legend about Roman aqueducts, where water flows through the aqueduct, and farmers could irrigate their crops with it. They paid the government according to the size hole they had, and then the water would just flow out continually. Well, apparently some clever farmers added a diffuser that increased the flow rate compared to just the hole by itself. But they paid the same price to the government. I guess this is one of the early examples of engineering ethics, or the lack thereof. There's another practical example that's similar, namely draining a tank. If we have some kind of a tank that has a liquid in it, and we put a small hole in a little section of pipe, let's call this one, the liquid will come out, and since it's exposed to atmospheric pressure, P1 equal P atmosphere, and there's a certain volume flow rate that we get. Now imagine the same tank, but we add a diffuser to the outlet. Again, we have a jet exiting into the atmosphere. This is location one, and this is location two, and we'll have some volume flow rate, but this is still a jet exiting into the atmosphere, so P2 equal P atmosphere. But what about P1 then? Since P increases through the diffuser, P1 has to be less than P atmosphere since it's less than P2. So if you look at one by itself, in both cases, we have a lower pressure in this case than we had in this case. So the diffuser supplies a kind of suction to draw more water out. So V dot with the diffuser is greater than V dot without the diffuser. You get an increased volume flow rate quote, for free, unquote, other than the cost of the diffuser itself. I'll now show a little demo that I did with a water bottle. Some students made a diffuser on a 3D printer and glued it to a bottle cap with a hole in it. We had a second bottle cap with the same size hole. I have two identical lids, one with a diffuser attached. I screw them on the bottle and turn them over. I start the timer when I release my finger from the little hole at the top. You can see that the one with the diffuser has drained, while the one without the diffuser still has water in it. It takes longer for that one to drain. The diffuser has increased the volume flow rate. Here's another example. I've built a couple wind tunnels in my life. Here's a schematic of a wind tunnel I built for the undergraduate fluid mechanics lab. There's a well-rounded inlet with some honeycombs and a screen, a finer honeycomb and a finer screen. Air is drawn in from the room and the honeycombs and screens make the flow pretty uniform here. It accelerates through a contraction, and we get a high-speed flow in the test section, maximum being about 50 meters per second. There's a short diffuser 
that goes from rectangular to round as well, and then a blower that drives the flow. Suppose I didn't know about diffusers and I let the flow just exit into the air. Well, like the previous example with the Roman aqueduct or the draining tank, the pressure of this jet is P atmosphere and the average speed at the exit is V exit. Well, downstream, this jet just dissipates. All of the kinetic energy of this jet is wasted, eventually turning to heat, heats up the room. So what I did in my wind tunnel was add a nice diffuser. Recall that V goes down and P goes up through the diffuser. So V exit is smaller. All of this jet kinetic energy is also wasted, converted to heat. But kinetic energy is proportional to V squared. So at the same flow rate, we're wasting less kinetic energy. What does that do in practice? Well, it means that for the same flow rate in the test section, I can have a smaller blower that uses less power. So the blower is less costly and uses less electricity. Alternately, if I had the same blower and I add the diffuser, I would have a higher test section speed than I did in this case. I increase the speed by adding the diffuser and or I decrease the electrical power required at the same speed. Either way you look at it, the diffuser has helped, and once you install it, these advantages are there for the lifetime of the tunnel. In my case in the fluids lab, I also added a muffler, which consisted of some perforated plate steel wrapped around some insulation, and vastly decreased the sound coming from this compared to what this case would have been. Another advantage of the diffuser is that the flow here, since it's much slower, is not disturbing the room as much. This high speed jet would be blowing up people's papers and hair all around. This one is much more tame. So you see how I used a diffuser to my advantage when I built this wind tunnel. Another example is a hydroelectric dam for which I've done some research. Here's a simplified schematic. This is the concrete dam through which is cut a large pipe called a penstock. The water goes through a scroll into a turbine that spins a generator and the flow is directed downward and then has to turn in order to discharge into the river or the reservoir that's below the dam, which by the way is called the tail race. Well, the same situation applies here as we've been talking about. If we let the flow come out as shown, you'll waste a lot of kinetic energy and the pressure here will be the same as the pressure of the water at the exit. So adding a diffuser will help. In an actual dam, the diffuser is integrated into the elbow. So it's all one unit called a draft tube. For the same location, one, the draft tube, which functions as a diffuser, lowers the pressure here compared to here. Since again, the pressure here is the same as the hydrostatic pressure of the water. And since P goes up through the draft tube as speed goes down, the pressure here is lower than it was here. You could think of it as the draft tube adding some suction at point one, which can draw the water through faster and therefore generate more power. Now let's do an example problem. We have water, and I rounded off the density and viscosity, flowing through a horizontal diffuser. The flow is fully developed at both locations one and two. We go from little d to capital D through a 20 degree diffuser. In other words, the half angle is 10 degrees, but the total included angle is 20 degrees. By convention, theta is the total included angle. Here are some values of D and capital D, the average speed at location one, and P2 discharges into the atmosphere. So P2 is P atmosphere. We assume fully developed turbulent flow. So we'll use alpha one and alpha two as 1.05. We wanna calculate the gauge pressure at location one. As I've said many times, the first step is to choose a wise control volume. It's pretty obvious that I wanna cut through one, cut through two, and include the entire diffuser in my control volume. Now we can write the energy equation. Here's our standard workhorse energy equation in head form. We simplify as much as possible. There's no pump, there's no turbine, and Z1 is equal to Z2 since this diffuser is horizontal. All the other terms remain, but there are no major losses in this control volume, only minor loss, and only one at that, namely the minor loss of the diffuser. We were asked for gauge pressure at location one. I can subtract atmospheric pressure over rho g from both sides of the equation. And since P2 is equal to P atmosphere, P gauge two equals zero. So this equation reduces to P gauge one equal P1 minus P atmosphere. And I collect the terms to get rho alpha two V2 squared minus alpha one V1 squared over two plus our minor loss, which is KL of the diffuser, rho V squared over two. But which V do we use? Remember by convention, we use the larger V when you have a change of diameter. So we use V1, not V2. Well, we were given V1, but we don't know V2. 
so we'll use conservation of mass for incompressible flow. V2 equal V1 A1 over A2 equal V1 little d over big D squared. We look up the minor loss coefficient for this diffuser. It turns out to be 0 0.15, since D over D is 0 0.60, and the included angle is 20 degrees. Plugging this in and doing a little bit of algebra, equation 1 becomes P gauge 1 equal rho V1 squared over 2 times the quantity alpha 2 D over D to the fourth minus alpha 1 plus the KL of our diffuser. This is our answer in variable form. Now we plug in the numbers rho V alpha 2 little d big D alpha 1 and KL. A unity conversion ratio and another unity conversion ratio which gives us negative 13.751 kPa. To our standard three digits in engineering, my answer is negative 13.7 kPa. We were also asked to discuss the results. We notice that P gauge 1 is negative, which is what we've been saying all along for diffusers. As you go through the diffuser, V goes down, but P goes up. Engineers call this a pressure recovery as a result of the diffuser. So one final comment. It's not always wise to add a diffuser. Suppose you have a garden hose and you're washing your car. Adding a diffuser would make the flow go a little faster, but it would just dribble out and not have much of a spray. In a case like this, it's actually better to add a nozzle, which is the opposite of a diffuser. This makes the flow come out really fast and is better for washing your car. But in all the other examples I've shown you, adding a diffuser increases the flow without the addition of any blower or pump. In those cases, I conclude that yes, there is free lunch. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.